Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to build dynamic select fields using Hotwire. We've talked about this in the past using some gems and stimulus to make a JSON request to the server with Ajax and um, dynamically update the other select field. But we can do this even easier using Hotwire and the Rails request.js library that's brand new. So let's dive into building this. So we're going to use a scaffold to create an address model with a country and a state. And this is gonna be the two fields that we'll have in our form that we want to fill out. We'll fill out the country first and that's going to give us the available states. So let's go and run bundle add the city state gem, which is a gem that has countries, cities, states that are um, easily loadable for us. There's just some example data that we can use very easily, but you can use other gems, other libraries, build your own, whatever you need for your application. Um, and then we're gonna run Rails DB migrate to create that addresses table, and we can load up the addresses slash new route, and we'll see what we have our form here with our country and state. We need to change these to select fields though. So let's go and go to our form, and we'll change this text field for each one of these to be a select instead, and that's gonna have two different arguments that we have to add. One is going to be the options for the field. The next is going to be options for those, um, such as prompt select a country. And lastly is the options that go in the HTML on that field that's generated. So we're gonna do basically the same thing for this and we'll just leave this empty for the state field, and voila. Now we have um, these fields for us with select. So we can go and change these to use the bootstrap form select field instead, and that is going to give us uh, the proper styling and everything, and we can go change this from an empty array to cs.countries, Dot invert, and that's gonna give us all of the countries as a hash with the key as the name of the country, like United States, and the value of it is US. So if we refresh now, we will see we have all of the countries, and if we choose Albania, we can inspect the HTML, and we will see that the selected item for Albania, um, where is that, has the value of AL. So we're gonna be able to use that value in order to grab all of the states or provinces for the given country on the server side. So this is um, good, we're ready to go. We can set up some JavaScript to listen for when this field changes and have Stimulus run a request.js request to the server to update the states. So let's start wiring up our Stimulus controller. We're gonna have a div around this called uh, controller is say country and that is going to wrap around these two fields. And then we want this first country field to say data action. When this changes, we'll call the country controller, we'll call say a change method on it. So we're gonna need to add a controller to our app JavaScript's controllers folder. I've got hello controller in here. Let's just rename that to the country controller to match and then we can get rid of this connect and add a change instead and this will just say console.log hello and we'll just test to make sure that that is wired up correctly and we'll grab the event for it because we're going to need that to grab the value um, that you selected so let's go back here and fix this we're going to need the two curly braces to close that element that we um, added later. And there we go. So now if we open up the JavaScript console, we should see hello is printed out anytime we change one of these, and it is, that's great. And now we can go and um, add the request to this uh, event. So first off, to build our request, we actually need to grab the event target dot selected options grab the first one and call value. So what is that doing? Well, that is saying when you click this and you change to Andorra, we're going to look at that Andorra option element 
and grab the value from it. So we get AD. If we go and grab Australia, we get AU. We can go down to Kosovo and we get XK. And we get all of the country codes as two letters. So that's perfect. So this is really the country that we need. And in order to make our AJAX request, we're going to be using the brand new Rails Request.js library. I've worked on that, talked about it in previous episodes, so if you haven't seen those, go right ahead and watch them. We're going to run yarn add at Rails Request.js to make sure it's in our package JSON. And we can import the get from at Rails Request.js. This is going to make it easy for us to make get requests to our server. So the first argument is some route. So we can say addresses states and then pass in the country that we want. And in order to interpolate in JavaScript, we can use backticks instead of double quotes or single quotes. And that'll let us build a URL that we can request to the server. Now we do need to pass an option in here and that is response kind. And we say we want a turbo stream response. So Rails will see, okay, we need to check and see if there's a turbo stream format that the controller responds to, and we can render that out. So this is great and will get us to where we need to go on the JavaScript side, but our server side is going to need that route. So we'll go to our routes and we'll add collection do get states, and we can go into our addresses controller and add very quickly in here a states uh, action that we will respond with. So the states action needs to look at the params to grab that country and then ask the city, city state gem for all of the states or provinces in that country. So to do that we're going to grab at states um, and we'll say cs.get params country and that will get us all of the states for that country that we gave it. And then we're going to invert that as well. Same reason is uh, we want the name to be the key and the value to be the ID of the state, like the, the two letter NY for New York, for example. Then we can respond to do format, format dot turbo stream. And that is all we need in our controller. So if we go into our views, we can go into addresses and add states.turbostream.erb. And if we do that, then we can add our turbo stream response. So we'll say turbo stream.update and we need to give it some target to update on the page and then we give it a block of HTML to actually go and update on the page. Well, this part is very easy. We can say options for select just like we're used to doing in our forms we just pull out that piece into the small partial and we can use a turbo stream to update that so very simply this is going to be the at states that we want to render and that's going to generate all of the options tags for us now the question becomes how do we go and grab the correct target on the page because turbo stream wants us to either find an ID or a class in order to update those. Now, the downside to using a class is that it will update all of those matching ones on the page. So if you had the country select on the page twice, then this would actually update both of them if we gave it a class, and that would be bad. So we actually want to have some sort of ID in here. So we want to have a target, and we want the target equal to params target and we can simply update our JavaScript over here to also include that. So if we have target equals target and country we can say the target is the uh, new select that we're trying to update and its ID. So let's go and take a look at the page real quick. Rails is smart enough to generate an ID by, by default for our selects. So we just need to tell stimulus there's this target 
um, that's this select element. We'll grab the ID from that and pass it along. So what we'll do is we'll say static targets equals state, or we could do like two letters or two words state select, and then update our form. So if we go over on this side and we say uh, data country target state select, close those curly braces, then our target will be available in stimulus. This dot state select target dot ID. That will grab the ID from the HTML, pass it on to our request, and then our TurboStream response can then use that to update that individual one and now we'll make sure that it only updates the one stimulus state select on the page for that controller. So let's try this out and see if it works. If we go to Andorra, we will get all of Andorra's provinces or states, and we can go to Austria and see all of those. We can go down to, say, South Africa, and we'll see that those get updated as well. Now what's really cool about this is that our request to the server is actually receiving a TurboStream response, but RequestJS knows that if you get a TurboStream response, we wanna actually update the page and execute those changes immediately. So it does that behind the scenes, and we don't even have to process the response at all. It just works and does everything for us, which is super duper handy. So that's one of the benefits of using RequestJS and Hotwire, is our JavaScript becomes way simpler because the server can tell us how to update the page on its own. The next step, now that the feature is working, is to actually take a look at our code and refactor it and improve it in uh, any way we can. So the first thing is we can use the values API from stimulus2 to have a URL passed in. It is a string, and we can then use that URL here instead of a hard-coded URL. So this will be much more flexible and reusable for other select field types that might need to be dynamically loaded. So then we need to go to our form and say data country URL value equals either the addresses states that we had, which was hard coded before, or we can use ERB for this and say states addresses path. And that will have it included dynamically in the URL. If we ever change that, it will still be able to generate that from our routes. So this is a good improvement, but what about our query params? They're hard-coded with the keys and values. Maybe you can improve that. Well, the browser provides a API or object type that we can use called URL search params. And this is actually pretty cool. It can actually parse params that you might have, foo equals bar, in a string, or you can give it an object and it will parse that, and then it's able to spit out that target equals target and country equals country, and it will also URL escape all of those for you. So it encodes it properly so it will be in the URL and be interpreted correctly. So this is a useful tool for us, and we can just add things to it by saying params.append country is this and the same thing for target. And actually, let's just go and join these and change this to params.append target, voila. So that's going to make it much nicer so that our request is just going to simply interpolate the params as a string, voila. Now, another thing we could do, too, is we could have the name of this be dynamic as well. So the country is what we want to use for this example, but in, you know, a different one, we might not want the name to be country for the parameter. So we could say param name, um, we could say just param as a string, and this will end up being this dot param value, and this should be this dot URL value, I'm sorry. Um, in order to be correct. So this dot param value, that will be whatever we put in the HTML. So data country 
param value equals country. And that starts to make it to the point where we can rename this to maybe just select and say select target. And now this doesn't have to have any knowledge of it being a country select. So this is just maybe a dynamic select controller instead. So if we say, we'll just call it select controller to keep it simple, but you could probably call it dynamic select controller um, to be more clear. So here we can go and change all of these to say data controller select, data select URL value. We'll go down here and we'll say select change, and we'll also change this country target to select and select target. There we go. Now the one last thing is to fix this typo here. We want params for this value, not to be confused with the param value uh, from stimulus. But once all of those things are added, we can now go back to our page, refresh, uh, recompile the JavaScript, and test and see if this still works. And it does, which is great. Now there's one last thing that I wanna point out here, and that is there is a dependency on this field having an ID and Rails is helpful to automatically generate an ID for us, but what if there isn't one? Well, if we wanna use the stimulus controller on the same page two times, we need to be able to um, have an ID for each of those fields so it's separate. We talked about that before, but if there is no ID, what do we do? We don't have a value and so it will never be able to find it. Well, the solution is we can, when we connect the stimulus controller, um, this will be called for every time it's mounted on the page. So we can say this dot select target dot ID, check and see if it's equal to the empty string, which is the value you get back if there is none. And we can just assign one. So we can say select target dot ID equals math dot random dot two string. We'll get like 36 bytes or whatever that is. Um, to be assigned. So now we can go refresh this and when we see that select this time around, um, we will still get that ID because it's already there, so um, created by the form. But if we had a field with a nil ID, for example, um, then it will auto generate one for us. So this one has a random character string. We can refresh this, it's gonna be different. And if we added two of these to the page, we'd have different unique IDs for each so that updating the one won't accidentally update the other one as well. Um, and we can always guarantee then that there is an ID. So that is a other useful improvement to have here. And now we have a stimulus controller that can work for dynamic selects for any purpose. And that is a really useful um, enhancement to this that we didn't have before. So refactoring this was very, very useful because now by extracting those options and removing the hard-coded stuff, this controller can be useful for many different reasons, not just a country state select, but something else maybe where you're selecting a team and a user inside of it. And you're asking Rails on the back end to give you the teams and the users, for example. Now, a quick teaser before we go. In the next episode, I actually saw this URL search param stuff and building out this string for the URL and realized this would be nice to have as a feature inside request.js itself. I would love to be able to say query is country is X and target is Y and just have this take care of it for me. And then we could get rid of all this stuff and just say, here's the URL go add these query params to it for us, and all we have to do is build an object, and it would be much easier and cleaner to do that, rather than creating the search params and building the string for the URL with those, we can have request.js do that for us automatically. So that's what I implemented, and I'll walk you through uh, making that pull request in the next screencast. Until then, I will talk to you guys later. Peace.